Welcome to the floor, sci-fi and fantasy lore. We are in part three of the Blood War. We are going to be talking about the origins of the Dr the Durgar, the rise of Azuth, the death of Mistra, and the beginning of the Spell Plague. Uh, some major events involving Asmodeus and the Abyss. And uh, this is the episode that will contain some spoilers for the narrative of the descent into Avernus. So I won't mention those here, but we will be talking about Zariel and some of the events that come about in her life after she leads the Riders of El Terrell into Avernus. So if that is what you're looking for, this is the episode for you. Roll the intro. Do you remember the first story that was so spellbinding that it drove you to break the rules and stay up all night? To keep reading, keep listening, keep playing, so good you forgot your life and lived there? So good that the moment it ended, you asked yourself, what next? Welcome to the floor. Our goal is to take you back, take you deeper, to explore and understand more, and relive that childlike wonder. Join us as we dive deep into humanity's greatest stories, no matter how they are told, through books, movies, television, even games. One of us does an in-depth research on our topic. One of us is familiar with the topic. And one of us knows nothing. So the right questions will always be asked and will be addressed for anyone coming into the topic, regardless of how much you know. Enjoy another world another adventure, another spellbinding story. Join us on the floor. Welcome to part three of The Blood War. Last time we introduced the third party, the Yugolos from Gehenna, the neutral evil creatures that run the river Styx. We went over some name corrections, including Zariel the Archangel, and why the names of devils and demons changed. I'm going to take us back a ways to a time when the blood war did pause for a little bit and this is during a time period called the mind stalker wars this is negative 8100 dr so long whoa yeah. negative 8000 yes, that, that is dr that's yeah. way long ago nine and a half thousand years ago i think what we're looking about date. 18 so i think we're uh, boulder's gate is in uh the 12th is it in the 1200s or 12,000s? Fort. 14. 14. 1400s? Yeah, four, 1480s is okay. about when uh, Avernus and... Uh, I'm not sure when Baldur's Gate 3 starts yet. Okay, yeah, so yeah, almost 10,000 years ago. in the 1480s. And, and so this is uh, the Liliths, uh, or the Liths, the Lithids, right? squid face right. people. Uh, they started taking over realms and... Uh, uh, so the blood war stopped for a little bit and those forces turned against the Lithids because they would have overtaken their realms as well. And then during this blood stalker war is when uh, the Lithids captured a bunch of dwarves and during uh, this 4,000 year enslavement under them, um, they become gray dwarves. The, these, uh, the, the Duogar, yeah. Wait, real quick. So the li the Lipids... Uh, they, they're the ones that were in the like cinematic cutscenes and trailers for Baldur's Gate Three. Yes, mm -hmm. that's yeah. mind flares. Yeah. It. So, anyways, uh, Duogar, they're kind of like the drow of the dwarves. If that helps paint a good picture for you, yes, that paints a great. So they like stealing, um, <laughs> and it's completely legal as long as you don't get caught, kind of thing. I haven't gotten too much into their society, but. Underground, they turn gray, you know, uh, long time enslavement. Yeah, we'll we'll have to do an episode on the Duer God. Uh, one other question about them before we move on past them. Is their blood uh, 60% water or 60% beer <laughs> like actual dwarfs? Uh, I'll, I'll have to check in on that for you. I, I can do a creature feature for you if you like. Yeah, I, we might uh, have to. So I just wanted to cover that. Like, that was a time when the Blood War took a pause. 
Okay, so the, the Mind Flayers were out conquering everything, getting close to conquering the world, and Blood Wars like, time out, let's kill off the Lithids. That's uh-huh. on. Uh-huh. And so demons, devils, and Yuga Laws united forces during that time. Can you imagine being like 12 minutes from just total world domination and then all of the demons and devils were like, let's team up and kill this guy? Yes. <laughs> and you're like, hang on, you guys have been fighting since the dawn of time. You're like, yes, <laughs> that's <laughs> you are today. <laughs> that's <how laughs> you are today. <laughs> Yeah, when the forces of hell, <laughs> who spend all their time killing each other, turn their attention towards you. Yeah. Same experience that the Celestials had. Oh no, this isn't good. This yeah. isn't good at all. It's, it's like when that two two kids who are like siblings get along. You're like, oh no, this is going to be bad. It's like, oh, they're, they're not fighting with each other right now. Clearly there's uh, some worse going on. Exactly. Now, I want to tell you about uh, a guy named Azus. He was born a mortal man, but he craved power and seek knowledge and power his whole life and ends up stealing a portion of the power of the god Sarvas, the god of wizards. He imprisons the god himself in a staff that he uses. And because he has taken a piece of this power, he has ascended into a certain godhood and becomes Mistra's lover, the god of magic. Now, during the time of troubles, Azus decided to free uh, the god Sarvas. That's does, where I know Azus. Wait, does, oh, he's one of the deities you can pick, yeah. Is Azus, like, does everybody know him and Mistra are dating? Like, it's common knowledge, or is he more of a mistress of Mistra? situation he replaces the god of wizards if if you study magic you know who azuf is yeah he okay. is the god right mistra is where the magic comes from but like that's like raw power where seymour is like the knowledge and the workarounds and how to manipulate the weave and he's like the one who's in charge of like all of it basically uh, of wizards of Wizards, okay. So when was Wizards of the Coast, when did they buy D&D, or did they always own it? 1997 is when uh, they buy TSR, which was the original Dungeons & Dragons company. Okay, so he's basically a deity version of Wizards <laughs> of the Coast. <laughs> so he just took over the magic rules of inside D&D, whereas Wizards of the Coast took over the rules of D&D itself. Yeah, same thing, got it. During the times of troubles, he decides to free this god in exchange for an oath of fealty, right? Uh, that he he will still serve him and he, he won't just come out and destroy him before stealing his power and imprisoning him, right? But this does weaken Azus' power when he frees him from this staff. Later, in the times of trouble, comes the assassination of his lover, Mistra. And this causes what's called the Spell Plague, um, yeah, we've mentioned that to you before. Uh, we do. I do plan to do a short on each of the major major crises. Um, so, so that will be coming. It's not out yet, but when we put it out, we'll put those links here, so you can be like, "What is the time of troubles? What is the spell play? What is the first shattering and the second shattering?" So you can dig up those lore episodes because they're, they're big things in understanding the D and D world. Yeah, and and I'm I'm gonna touch on them lightly. Okay. Blood War is involved with these major events. After the sp- spell plague hits, comes the destruction of the h- higher plane. I'm going to have a hard time with it. The Almar Heart, it was a higher plane in like the celestial area that is destroyed. And this is where Zeus lived. And so he falls down to hell after this plane is destroyed. Specifically, he falls to the plane of hell, Nessus which is the ninth and deepest layer of hell. Oh. And this is landing at the feet of the king of hell, Asmodeus. And Asmodeus absorbs Azuth into his body, gaining his power. Whoa. He, he, he's like, I'm going to free you, but don't, uh, don't trap me. And then he ends up falling into hell and getting absorbed by Asmodeus. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Asmodeus now has... A bunch of new power. Wait, so wait. Okay, so Osmosis just upgraded? Asmodeus. Oh, I, well, I mean, he kind of went through an Osmosis process. <laughs> oh, Asmodeus went Osmosis. 
<laughs> Osmosis. What was the other guy's name? Alucard? Azuth. Oh, Azuth. I feel like Aaron's name selection is like based on the games he played. <laughs> it's just, uh-huh. I don't remember yeah, being yeah. Alucard in Castlevania. <laughs> that dude was dope. Yeah. <laughs> no, I I, it's the games I played or the shows I watched. I didn't play that one. I did watch it avidly, though. Oh, I remember. I don't know which Castlevania it was, but you played uh, as both one of the Belmonts and Alucard. And Alucard was just so OP because he could like fly. Yeah. And he's been around for like thousands of years. So there's also, you know that helpful tip okay so yes with so osmosis powers asmodeus's new uh found power he is able to physically mm-hmm. move the abyss in the uh realm space and he shoves it down to the very bottom of the elemental chaos now this will isolate the demons quite a bit more and their infighting becomes more and more and they're, they're not able to just spill out as easily as they were before. They don't have that direct access on the river where Avernus is like right next door, right? They've been pushed far down deep into the elemental chaos as he could push them. Okay, so he, he pushed them like really, really far down. <laughs> yeah. Did he push them all the way down to the bottom layer of hell? This is deep below hell now. Hell, hell sits on a much higher level than the abyss does at this point. When Asmodeus does this, um, this I know we had talked about. I don't think we talked about this on the podcast. I'm going to ask you a question that you're going to have to answer, and good luck with <laughs> it. Uh, is that is it as far down as where the dragon crashed? No. So uh, the dragon crashes into hell. Uh, oh, he doesn't go that far down. Uh, specifically, uh, Nessus, but this is before the abyss gets shifted down. Okay. Uh, my other question is, um, uh, Osmodius, he osmosis a tooth, right? And did he take on like all of a tooth's like thoughts, feelings, and emotions too? So is he like but hurt that Mistra died? Um, Azuz uh, still exists within Osmodius's body. Oh, so this is like, so when we talk about, when we get into DC metal, this is like the Flash of Batman when they became one. Oh, yeah. Got like it. little Flash traps inside of Batman. Let me in out. Let yeah. me in out. No. Now, Asmodeus has control most of the time, but Zeus will sometimes uh, gain control. Uh, but very rarely, a lot of people think Asmodeus is losing his mind because Zeus will take over and then have strange things and start doing things. Right. Asmodeus is like, I don't like sushi. Sushi's disgusting. Azuth is like, dude, feed me sushi. I love sushi. Like, dude, this guy's crazy. Right. Let's take a break here, and then we'll get a sum up and hopefully kind of clarify some of this. Okay, so we have been mentioning at the end of our episodes recently about the treasure room, how, as Aaron likes to describe it, in the floor we go deep into things, but in the treasure room we kind of go wide. And we wanted to give people who have never been in the treasure room uh, a little bit of a sample. So going forward, we'll probably be uh, putting in little bits and pieces here. So here is a small clip uh, from the treasure room. We hope you enjoy it and are interested in uh, learning more in there. that after the hundred year hiatus between the devils and the demons and the blood war, the demons have returned. They are far stronger than they have ever been and they are winning. So the question is, how do you stop the tide? So I would say I'm going to have a really high uh, charisma stat, right? And I'll just tell them they should stop. I'll just tell them. (laughs) It's my uh, working plan. <laughs> so, have you seen the uh, Viva La Dirt, where he just like goes a hundred percent charisma, and like he just resolves every conflict that way? I haven't seen no. that, but I can imagine. That's why I always have slightly high charisma characters. Yeah, and then uh, so I think it, it's Rowan who's got. He, he decides to just dump everything into charisma, and Bree is his companion. She's like, "You can't put everything in charisma. Some of these things you're gonna have to fight."
All right, Aaron, you think you can bring us back? Well, yeah, as long as I would like to call things what I wanted. <laughs> and correct me as we go. All right, so we're back into the Descent into Avernus. We're talking specifically about the Blood War again. This is part three yes. of the Blood War. And this is the second half of part three. So far, we've been talking about the lipids. Uh, they're not lipids. They're not fat cells. But they still get eaten out of existence like they were. Uh, by the devils and demons coming together, which is strange because order and chaos coming together is very rare. So you got to be like top tier douche pickle for them to want to kill you off. So that happened. Uh, then we had Azuth. He was the god of magic for like a day. Yeah, it was longer than that. <laughs> yeah, well, whatever. And then he got all butt hurt because his mistress, uh, his mistress died. So then he awakened a very powerful or an imprisoned god. So he imprisoned the god to be to replace him, right? So he imprisons the old god of magic to take his place next to Mistra. Oh, and that was uh, Os- Azuth. Os- Osmosis. Azuth. The, no, no, the, the nope, other guy. He doesn't the... come in yet. So, oh, okay. Right. Uh, Azuth's the one who imprisoned him, but he imprisoned someone else. So Azuth in Sabaris. Yeah. Savaris, okay, I didn't catch that name. So Savaris got imprisoned so that Azuth could become big king magic man. Yeah. Uh, god of magic and the physics of magic. Mm-hmm. And then he started dating Mistra, but then she got assassinated, so he got butt hurt. So he went to go unimprison Osmosis Jones. Well, no, so Mistra... A mister gets assassinated, and the entire plane, the world where he lives, oh. is destroyed. And that's when oh, he falls okay. down so to hell. They just pulled the rug right f- out from underneath him. It's yeah. like that, car- like cartoons where like Roadrunner runs out on on the <laughs> earth, or like the nothingness of the sky, and Coyote follows him and falls. And those little squeaky sounds, the whoop, 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 sounds. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly like that. And, like, ah, and then he falls down. And then he goes to uh, unimprison. Uh, that already happened. Oh, okay. That, that happened that. before a mister gets killed. Oh, okay. But that's why one of the reasons he was weakened and he wasn't able to stop some of these things is because he really okay. pushed some of his power yeah. to let Sarvis free. Sarvis. Well, what about Osmosis? What, what about that guy? Asmodeus. He's the king yes, of hell. Modus. He's the king. Okay. So Sarvis, he released. Yes. And then Asmodeus, the king of hell, ate a tooth? Azuth. Yeah, Azuth. Absorbed him into his body. Yeah, as, as uh, osmosis style. Yeah. Well, sh- he could have eaten him, but but it's it's more understood that he is absorbed into his body. Yeah, I've, I've, I actually, so I've watched and read a lot of Venom comics, so I can kind of envision this one pretty, pretty easily. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So, pushing the abyss down to the bottom of the elemental chaos, the demons aren't really coming up anymore. And some people believe that, that he has successfully stopped the war, but most people believe that this is just a delay. So this is Asmodeus pushing it down. So now that he's got some of Azuth's power with him trapped inside, he's able to push. He can move elemental planes. Yeah. Okay. So he's pushing the abyss down. Okay. The the demons in the abyss they have lots of infighting because they're kind of s- stuck and isolated. They they just have more and more infighting, and the devils decide not to attack them because they're worried that that'll unify them again and they'll rise up. So the devils are like, we're just going to bolster our forces. Get ready. In anticipation that they will rise again. The demons down below are not actually infighting as much as they think and they're actually growing a lot stronger and a lot larger forces. But this lasts for about a hundred years. Right, so this would be like a hundred year pause on the blood war. Not long in the wake of the blood war. No, no, not long. As the demons are bubbling up and getting ready, we now have the events of the second sundering underway. And so Osmodius gets a little tied up 
and it isn't going to be properly leading the devils against the demons when they do come up. How do you how do you not properly lead? When the demons come, he's not even in the nine hells. Where's he? So during this second sundering that is happening, uh, Azuth is able to get some messages out to some people, being like, hey, I'm trapped in Asmodeus. And they're like, all right, well, let's see if we can make a deal to get you out of there. How did he send these messages? Uh, so, like I said, sometimes he could uh, take... Take every once in a while he takes over. And so he was able to get messages sent out. Wait, so what you're saying is at some points Asmodeus would walk up to someone and be like, hey, I'm actually a zoo stuck inside Asmodeus. Trust me. Help me get out of here. And then people have to be like, okay, that's clearly not Asmodeus trying to trick me. It's actually a zoo in there. Seems really risky. It, that does sound risky, and I imagine that he more sent messages as Asmodeus, right? Azuth being like, I'll just send a message as Asmodeus, because everyone down here has to obey Asmodeus. Oh, that makes sense. That that could work, too. So, I, I, I think it would go a little bit more in that direction. So, he'd probably be a little sneaky about it. The thing that pulls him away from the Nine Hells is he uh, he makes a deal with some other gods saying that he will let uh, Azuth out of his body if they re- return um, the god name Nan Sin or Nana Sin. Naan? I think it's Naan Sin. This is a dead god of the moon, and he wants that, do- that god to be returned. And so that's what he makes the deal for. He has to go and do a ritual that's not on the Nine Hells to release Azuth from his body, and then they will return Naan Sin, this dead god of the moon. That is why he's not in hell. Now, Zariel, the archangel we spoke of earlier, who wanted to fight in the Blood War and disobeyed the agreement between the Celestials and the Fiends, and the Fiends, right? She goes down to hell to fight in the Blood War. You remember this? So she leads an army of uh, high riders from El Terrell into hell, yeah, to not necessarily, I guess, kind of fight in the blood war, mostly just to fight off devils. Like so she's like, Zeriel, the one thing she wants to do is fight in the blood war, right? She observes right. it and she desperately wants to fight it, and everyone's like, no, you can't. And so this is when she's like, I'm done. I'm going to fight in the blood war, you know? All right. Well, and she gets an army of mortals. She, she right? does. And now these mortals are there to fight devils, which, you know, I think as far as Zariel is concerned, he said, blood war is blood war. Demon, devil, I'll kill anything. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's basically what's going on here. Yeah. So when she goes down, her army is slaughtered. She is defeated. She is then brought to Asmodeus. And he was very impressed by her zeal for warfare. And he offers to make her the Archduke of Avernus. She gets what she always wanted, to fight in the blood war. And as for the agreement between the Celestials and the Devils, it is not broken if she becomes an archdevil, right? Right, because then it wasn't an archangel that came down. It's an archdevil. And so she takes the place of the previous Lord of Avernus, Bell. Now she is ruling Avernus. over the front lines of the blood war, yep. which is Avernus. And then the demons return. They're obviously more powerful than hell has ever seen after this hundred years of absence. Were they just like working out and eating larva the whole time? Yeah. Just building skip, war machines. There skip to demons. a demon montage. They're all just like lifted weights, building <laughs> war machines, doing uh, a line of larva. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Sipping on souls. Yeah. <laughs> stuff so like that between sets so with the as uh, with, with the absence of Asmodeus she is the one leading the forces of hell when the demons rise up she is the one who decides to start, start taking cities from the material plane to fight in the blood war Hello. this brings us up to date to the descent into, into Avernus. Avernus. 
So let's end this chapter of the blood war here. Do you have more? I've I've just got a little bit more here, and it'll lead into our treasure room question. Oh, okay. All right, then let's finish this up. And uh... she will lose this battle. This loss could turn the tide of the blood war in the favor of the demons. The kind of turn that could result in the demons taking over the nine hells. And then on to the rest of the lower planes. And then on and on until there's nothing left but demons and an endless age of darkness. So, my treasure room question for you is, if the battle has turned for the blood war, what would you try to do to stop it? How would you hold back the armies of the abyss? And this is, this is after the demons worked out for a hundred years to the lines of Florida yeah. and just... I don't even know what demon steroids is, but I imagine they were doing that for a hundred years. All right, yeah. We'll address that in the treasure room. We hope you've enjoyed this episode. We have mentioned in the past that if you go to the Patreon page, we have collections of all the different worlds and pieces of lore we have covered. For example, if you want everything we have ever done about Baldur's Gate, from the invention of D&D to... Baldur's Gate 1, Baldur's Gate 2, Dark Alliance, all of that. You can find individual collections for all of those or just one big collection containing all of Baldur's Gate or all of D&D. So everything we have covered, everything we've covered, Eberron, Marvel, DC, Alien Zooniverse, Cyberpunk, Dune, and more. We have collections for each of those worlds. And I do want to mention that on the Patreon, the only thing behind the subscription is the treasure room content anything that has been released in the podcast for free is still free there it is just a better organization of the information that the podcast app doesn't let us do they are just a big list and you just got to type in your search words on the patreon there are tags for everything you got fantasy D D, creature features Baldur's Gate 1, Baldur's Gate 2, Dark Alliance, all of that. Just an individual tag for those episodes. And as I said, we do have collections just to make this as easy as possible to find what you're looking for. We have learned in the past that a lot of people who listen to the floor, they're interested in one or two of the worlds. And they may check out one or two of the episodes when we switch worlds. But they're really just mostly interested in that. So we just want to like consolidate everything you're looking for to make it just as easy as possible to access. So... Check that out just to make your life easier. And uh, we are working at making sure you can download any of the free episodes there. So even if you're going to lose Wi-Fi or connection, you can get the episodes you want before that happens. Or just not burn your data while you're traveling to and from work or whatever else is you do while you listen. And uh, thank you. I hope you continue to enjoy the show.